Well, we started a series a couple of weeks ago that we've been calling, where did you hear that? We've been talking about hearing God and recognizing that it is God that is talking to us. We are constantly, constantly looking for information. Why do we do that? Because we like to be on top of things. We, we like to be informed. So how do we do that? We, we talk to family members, friends. We also Google it for information. We watch uh, YouTube. We pay attention to Facebook or any of the other social media, whatever they're called that's out there. We pay attention to them. And maybe we might use, and it's kind of gotten to where it's kind of a lost art with all this technology around us, looking at a at hard copy, reading a book, or reading a magazine article for information on whatever we're looking for. So obviously there are lots of ways to get informed, to educate ourselves. And as we've been saying, that's one of the problems that we have because uh, we can so easily be deceived by the, the fake news, news that appears to be real, to be true but actually is false, used to deceive us. As we've been looking at the last couple of weeks, we know that Satan is the, the master of this. Jesus tells us that he's the father of all lies. False news, that's what it is, false. But in God, and therefore in Jesus, there are no lies. There's only truth. Scripture tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Also tells us that there's no deception in him. And that is why it is so important to hear God to listen, to let it get past our ears and inside of us and make a difference in our lives in how we make decisions, how we react to the information that we plug into our brains. All of these resources of information that get you informed would probably need to test them out. Where did you hear that? What is the source of that information? Can I trust that information? I think it's probably pretty obvious that you don't go to a, a doctor to get advice on how to build your house. Probably not a very good idea because they're not always a source that's going to know, be able to do something about that. But also, you don't want to come to me to have an me to take your body parts out and sew you back up. Well, I bet you that came out of mess. You want somebody who knows what the truth is, knows what they're doing. To that we can trust. 
And so much of our life, we need to be looking to God. That's why it's so important to hear God, to listen to God, because he is the only source that always is real truth. Maybe not always what we want to hear. Sometimes it's difficult. But truth that will benefit you in your life to listen to and to apply to our lives. Where did you hear that? From God, the source of truth? Or was it some fake news that comes from the source of lies? Satan. So then, as we talked about two weeks ago, how do we listen to God? How do we hear God? Of course, first of all, it's his written word. Whatever information that we might be receiving, it's, uh, if it's from God, it will be confirmed through his word. It will never be contradicted in God's word. Through prayer, our spending time and listening to him, to have a conversation with him, and then going hand in hand with that is his Holy Spirit to communicate with us as we're praying. Holy Spirit in, in, our, in our hearts because of Jesus that teaches us and reminds us. We don't ever need that, right? Reminds us of what we've already been taught, what we need to remember by looking at the circumstances that we experience in life, those events and in life that we need to be paying attention to, God moments, situations that kind of get our attention, that kind of wake us up, and also through community, family, friends, acquaintances, church family. And as we talked about last week, there's a, there's a battle going on for your hearing, for what fills us. A battle between fake news, real truth, between the father of lies, Satan himself, and Jesus, the giver of springs of living water flowing from within you. A battle between information that robs us of life and information that gives us life. Life to the full. But what do we do? We reduce, when we reduce our time in his written word, when we reduce our time in prayer and communication with him, when we confine the Holy Spirit to just certain times or certain areas of our life, when we don't pay attention to what is happening around us, that it's just one of those things, it just happened, when we reduce our time spent in community with family, with his family, what happens? We run dry. Low spiritually and physically, energy-wise. What happened? We started listening and expecting the truth from the wrong sources from the fake news, instead of listening to the source of real truth, God himself. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And this is what I want to bring out of this verse. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions you want to know what God is saying? Then don't let the word of the Lord be rare. You can't hear if you're not putting yourself in a place of listening. Listening. 
Listen. Just as sin keeps us from hearing God, sin can also hinder our desire to gather with other believers in Jesus. To hear God's voice in our worship. Think about it. What did Adam do when he sinned? Didn't he hide from God? It's a natural reaction we have when we know that we are wrong. When we have sinned. When we do that, it, there's a, I don't know, what did we, an uncomfortable separation maybe between us and God. So what do we do? We hide from him. That is why repentance, stop and turn the other way, that's why repentance can be so incredibly restorative in our lives. When you turn from hiding from God to seeking God, it is always easier to hear God. When you're having trouble hearing someone talking to you, what do you do? You move further away, right? No. You move closer. We were created to hear God, to be in community with him, in conversation with him. We are created to be a people of vision. Therefore, a people of hope. Without that vision, that hope, what is left? There's emptiness. There's darkness. There's that dryness we talked about last week. And there is perishing. Proverbs 29, I think I put this for, yeah, Proverbs 29, verse 18 says that where there is no vision, the people perish. So that brings us to this morning's message. God speaks to us in dreams and visions. This isn't something that is out there. God speaks to us in dreams and visions. They say that if you were to take all of the references to dreams and visions, the books of the Bible that are inspired by dreams and visions, that it would, uh, I don't know, encompass 30% of the Bible. Now, personally, I'm not a scholar. I don't know these things, but I would think it would probably be higher than 30%. I mean, think about it. The book of Revelation. We know that John wrote that. Where did that come from? It was inspired by the Holy Spirit in John through what? A vision. The whole Bible, or the whole Revel book of Revelation. So that 30% might, maybe it could be higher than that. But what I want to bring to you and to remind you of this morning is that God does give us dreams, does give us visions for his work, for his purposes. There's no doubt that in the scripture, God used dreams to direct people to reveal things to people, to warn people, to correct, but also to confirm to people. In Scripture, God gives dreams when people are sleeping, but he also gives visions when they are awake. Once again, the primary, the foundational source way that God speaks to us is through his word, his written word. And I totally agree with that. And I think you do too. But I just don't agree 
with people who put a limit on God by saying that he doesn't, can't, or won't speak or communicate in any other way. That it is only his Bible, his word, his written word that it communicates with. I'm sure that you have heard, probably even read, about the countless reports of Muslims these days, today, coming into the kingdom of God by the thousands. Why? Because they have seen, had dreams and they've seen visions of Jesus himself. So let's just do a quick, short, not all inclusive for sure, especially if it's over 30% of the Bible. I'm not going to do that to you this morning. I'm not even going to tackle that. But let's just look at some of, the, some of God's word, what he says and how he used dreams and visions. We see in Genesis 20, God protected a king named Amalek from sleeping with Abraham's wife, Sarah, by warning him how in a dream. In Genesis 28, Jacob meets God how in a dream. He reveals a ladder from heaven to earth with angels ascending and descending. And you remember in that scripture that he calls that place Bethel, which means gathering of God's people, God's presence. We also see in Genesis 37, where God uh, showed uh, the young Joseph through a couple of dreams that he would rule over his brothers and even his father. Now, I'm not sure that that didn't go to the young Joseph's mind a little bit there, to his head, because he kind of mistreated those dreams by bragging about them and receiving them. But in that mistreatment of those dreams, it was what God, that was what God used to set up and to start that process, God's plans for saving his people. Sometimes when God drops a dream or a vision into our hearts, into our lives, sometimes we need to guard it. Sometimes we need to protect it for a, a little while. We probably need to insert her cert here that we need to also understand that it's not our job to create the dreams. It's not our job to create the dreams in our life. Sometimes we take ownership and we call them my dream when actually it's God's dream for you. God is the source. In Genesis 41, when Joseph, remember, interprets the dreams of Pharaoh, he's promoted and he saves the country and his family during the famine. Dreams and visions in the Old Testament were pretty common. It was a common way that God spoke to his people. In Numbers 12 Verse 6, he, that is God, said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, he identifies himself, reveal myself, how? Reveal myself to them in visions, and I speak to them in dreams. Daniel, he had dreams. Where God gave him these Fantastic revelations, revelations that scholars even today are trying to figure out. Solomon, 
What do we contribute to Solomon immediately? Wisdom. And that moment that God gave him that wisdom. Remember how that happened? 1 Kings 3, 5. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night. How? In a dream. And God said, ask for what you want me to give you. In a few verses later, in, in 15, then Solomon awoke, and he realized it had been a dream. So he dismissed it, right? No. He believed it. He knew it was from God. And how did he react to that? He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the altar of the Lord's covenant, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. It led him to worship. How about the New Testament? Just a couple from there. We're coming up on the Christmas season. And we know that Joseph, the husband of Mary, after Jesus was, was born, he received instructions in a dream to flee to Egypt with the baby Jesus, therefore saving his life. In kind of a, a weird way that God uses his dreams, Pontius Pilate's wife, when Jesus was put on trial before he was crucified, she had a dream. It's recorded here in, in Matthew 27. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. God uses dreams. Without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Let me go back on that. You remember Peter at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was, was given to the, poured upon the disciples. Remember Peter stood up and he gave a message. And in that message he made this declaration in Acts 2. In the last days God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters your, will prophesy your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even all my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. In Acts 10, 9 through 16, Peter has a vision in which God showed him about the Gentiles being welcomed into the kingdom. We also find in those couple chapters right there where God visited Cornelius, a Roman soldier, a centurion that was a believer, and he confirmed that vision that Peter had. Remember, did I say that he was a Gentile? Once again, the primary basis, the most trusted resource for hearing God's word is his written word. But God also uses other sources that we've been talking about to confirm what he has communicated. You've heard, read, maybe seen, where people do some pretty foolish things in the, the name of, I heard from God. But they never take that and go through the process of discerning whether it was really from God or if it was the spicy burrito they had last night for dinner. And if that process is not in place, it can easily become a 
prideful thing for a receiver. That's how powerful the sources that we listen to can be. Test them out. Dreams will never be trumped if they're not be trumped through the scripture. They will be confirmed through scripture. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 7 says, Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. There's a lot of dreaming that goes on. There's a lot of talk going on. But so much of it is meaningless. Therefore, fear God. In other words, pursue the giver. The giver of dreams. We were created to dream. The psalmist writes in 126, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. What happened? Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. What just happened there? The dreams brought the people hope. Remember earlier we looked at Proverbs. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Dreams bring hope. And that produces, it leads to rejoicing and worship. The Lord always wants to encourage us. And from time to time, he does that through dreams. God-given dreams don't happen every day, but they happen. He still gives people dreams. Think about it. The dream that began in the heart of God for this area, for this church, was planted in the hearts of those that established this church back in, what was it, 57? <laughs> They were not the originator of this dream. God was. But they were the recipients of that dream. And then participants in the fulfillment of that dream. The way that God wants me to dream, he wants you to dream, is to dream along with him. With his plans, his dream. For me, for you, for us. So, what causes me, what causes you, what causes us to stop dreaming? To stop hoping? To feel that emptiness? that dryness that we talked about last week. What causes that? It comes down to how you answer the question we've been talking about. Where did you hear that? What or who are you listening to? What are the sources of information in your life that have captured your attention. God says in Jeremiah 29, very familiar verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. What is that? That's a dream. 
That's a vision that gives us hope, that brings us to worship. If we believe that God has plans and visions and dreams for us, we also believe that we've been created in his image, then isn't it time to dream his dreams again? To pray for them, to look for them, to recognize them? Time to wake up again to the possibilities, to pay attention to God's dreams. God's truth for you, for me, for us. Why is it that we seem to struggle so much with hearing God? Why is it we seem to struggle so much with recognizing God's dreams? that he gives us. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. This is going to be from the Amplified Bible, so there's some inserts in there kind of that explains the, the Greek in this. So it reads a little differently. But the natural, the unbelieving man, does not accept the things, the teachings and the revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness, foolishness, absurd, illogical to him. And he is incapable of understanding them because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. And he is the natural man is unqualified to judge spiritual matters. Verse 15. But the spiritual man, the spiritually mature Christian, judges all things, questions, examines, and applies what the Holy Spirit reveals, yet is himself judged by no one. The unbeliever cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. Therefore, for who has known the mind and purposes of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. To be guided by his thoughts, his purposes, and I've added in for this message, his dreams. Do you have a problem distinguishing between a pipe dream and a God-given dream? What it comes down to is this. What is the source of the information that you believe in? That you trusted in? What is the foundation of those dreams? Fake news that the natural man has or real truth that the spiritual man has? Again, you need to ask yourself, do I have a healthy process of hearing God? Are you in his word? Do you spend time talking to him? Do you listen to the Holy Spirit and let it be your guide? Do you pay attention to the circumstances, the God moments in different situations in your life? Are you part of the community, his community, an active part? need to ask, what am I depending on to feed me, to nourish me, to fill me? Our 
active involvement in these five resources makes the difference in how we recognize the difference between fake news and real truth. The difference between bad news and good news. The difference between our dreams and God's dreams for us. So again, I ask you, what or who are you listening to? Father, I pray that through the rest of this Sabbath, that your spirit would bring this question up to us. And Father, that you would help us to honestly answer this question. What or who are we listening to? What are the sources that we are paying attention to, trusting and adjusting our lives to? Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit that you've placed in us, that we would be paying attention right now. Attention to your voice, to your leading. Reveal to each one of us Sources that maybe we've been trusting, that we've been building our life on, that aren't from you. Father, use your spirit to give us the courage and to give us the strength that we need to repent, to turn from them sources and look to you to your word, to spending time with you in, in conversation, to paying attention to the leading of your spirit, to pay attention to the circumstances in our life, and to desire to be a part of your community. Father, let them be the resources that we depend on for the information you want us to live by, to be the foundation of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Just turning to hymns to 454.